Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Escape from Tarkov tutorial. Something the game itself doesn't have yet, and something I've been asked about plenty of times. If you want to know more about Escape from Tarkov lore and its story, I already made a video about that. Link will be in the video description below. Now let's dig in. So, go to the official Battle State Games Escape from Tarkov site. Again, links in the video description below. And buy, or pre-order as they call it, uh, one of the game versions. Uh, why is it pre-order? Because the game officially isn't in 1.0 yet. Um, but it has more content than a lot of games that are. And it's not one of the most popular games for no reason. Now, when you are on the official site, this is what you will see. And one of the most frequently asked questions is, which game version should I buy? You just click here, pre-order, and you will be greeted with the standard version. This is the version you should buy when you're playing uh, the game for the first time. Uh, there's going to be a couple of more versions, which give you a couple of extra things at the beginning. They definitely make your life easier, but they're not pay to win. Why? Standard version. Because it is the cheapest one, and it's a hefty price, and this is without the extra charges. Um, and you don't know if you're gonna like the game. It's a very punishing, very brutal game, but very fun. Plenty of good aspects about it. But still, when you're buying the game for the first time, buy the standard version. If you like it, and if you want to invest more money into having permanently the bigger version and have some benefits of that, you can upgrade to any one of these at any point. I would suggest going for the biggest version then, uh, because obviously the biggest uh, initial benefits and as far as i know you will only pay for the difference in the price between the standard and the biggest version <laughs> now when you downloaded the game you will get the launcher the first thing you want to do before you actually click play is go to the change server in your respected region and make sure you choose the servers for you that are the lowest ping. You could technically leave the auto option, which is by default, but the way that I prefer to do it is I scroll through and I tick the ones that are like 20 ping or 30. Don't like to go uh, too high. Uh, I'm from EU, so obviously you'll know what you're looking for whichever region you are from click apply click apply <laughs> and then start the game <laughs> the last bullet. all right once you're in the game there's a couple of things you're gonna have to do when you're doing it for the first time so let's go through them together you're gonna click your language that you prefer you're going to choose your nickname, uh, Le Wee Wee, whatever. Try to be respectful, respectable. And then comes one of the major questions that also people have at the beginning. Should you choose a bear or should you choose a Yusek? This will be your main character. Uh, the left one, the bear, is the Russian. The right one, Yusek, is US, obviously. And... Um, the main difference between the two is how they look at the moment there will be huge differences later but at the moment how they look how they sound and a couple of different quests now my suggestion would be go with you and i'll explain why uh you will be given obviously uh, a couple of options on how to create your character how do you want your character to look like and how do you want your character to sound very silent at the moment but you can play with this yeah you can play with this pretty much um once your character is done with the audio setting so let's just skip on and we are now in the main menu of the game first things first i'm just gonna go to sound and lower the music to zero so it doesn't bother us um you are definitely going to want to go to your game and make sure you put your settings the way that you want them. As you can see, you can change your nickname here, no problem. Graphics, 
I'll leave this very shortly on screen so you can see how uh, I'm rolling with my graphics, which I've also found on YouTube from other people um, to get like the best performance and stuff. Um, controls are pretty much going to be down to your individual set, but they're quickly scrolled if you're interested. Um, now, first things first. Now you might think that, oh, I'm in the main menu of the game, it's time to rock and roll. No. Well, yes, you could be like me and just go escape from Tarkov and jump in a raid and have absolutely no idea what to do. Or, which is why you're here, you could do it the right way. There's going to be a couple of links that I will leave in the video description below that you absolutely need. Even the biggest veterans of the game have these links at the palm of their hands. Link number one the maps this is something that's an absolute must you will need to learn the maps these are the current maps that are in the game as you can see some of them are a little bit grayed out because you need to subscribe to this site to have access to it but you can find them on google just type in escape from tarkov reserve plenty of it will come out but for example the ones you can have here uh let's go with customs that would be my map number one of choice you click on it and this is the thing that you're gonna have to get yourself familiar with uh to make it simple you can just do this go hide all and now you have the map you can zoom in as you can see you can zoom in pretty pretty close and you can zoom out as much as you want so this is how the map customs looks like this is the very first map that i would recommend everybody that start playing the game with to play um because all the quests at the beginning are well not all but most of the quests at the beginning are going to be tied to this map and it's a great map it's my favorite map still to this day and i played multiple wipes now what do we do with the map um you're gonna have to learn the ins and outs uh, the game is called escape from tarkov for a reason you start on one of the maps in one of the locations you don't know where in the beginning and you need to find your way out on your way out you will probably want to grab some gear, grab some loot, maybe kill some people uh, and do some quests and then successfully extract. You're going to need to learn where are you when you first spawn in the game. You're going to need to learn where on the map you are actually and where your extraction is. There is no press M for map in the game, which is going to tell you oh, I'm over, I don't know, I'm over here and I need to extract over here. I'm just going to follow the map or the mini map and I'm going to know my way. You're not going to have a bloody clue. So there's a bunch of things that you can tick here on the left that's going to help you find your way. For example, uh, you can have all different types of loot, enemies and locations. Now we have spawn points. You can spawn on any one of these positions plenty of places so it's not like oh there's only like two or three spawns i'm gonna learn where i am fairly quickly you can spawn just about just about anywhere on the map and extractions are equally important as you can see with a simple click here you turn stuff off and on and it will tell you relatively accurately like what it is and where you can find it Starting positions and knowing your starting position is very important. The way you're going to do this is you're going to spawn, you're going to look around and you're going to try to establish where you are. My point of reference on this map when I started was this river, this river and this bridge. Uh, if you can find this and walk around a little bit, you will be able to figure out which side of the river you're on, which side on the river that you're on at your at, and then you're going to be able to go from there uh the map has the wall as its edges um so you're not going to be really able to walk away from the map however not all maps are perfectly closed and neither is this one if you take a look here this railroad you do not want to go lower than here i think all the new players pretty much died by doing so there's going to be a sniper that's going to shoot you down it doesn't technically exist 
it's just a barrier. Once you cross it, he fires, I think, a warning shot, and then he will kill you. Um, so don't go there. Okay, so you need to get yourself familiar with this map, with this link, with how it works, and have it at all times on your second monitor. Print it out if you don't have a second monitor, or have it on your phone. But you will need to have this and then observe the landmarks and try to figure out where you are. It's going to take a little bit. It's not an easy game to learn or master. It doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't tell you how to do anything. You will need to get used to these links. All right. Let's move to link number two. Quests. You can easily go to the game, traders, and you will have a bunch of dealers they call them traders available to you these are the guys that are going to be buying and selling with you everything from you and they will be giving you quests they will be rewarding you you will see the reputation you have with them and so on uh the like it's very important to level these guys up um it's also very important to understand uh where are the missions that they're giving you and the missions they're giving you they're gonna very vaguely explain where these things are so you go to this link and then you click on whatever dealer gave you the uh the mission you click on it you find the name of the mission like for example debut you open this and then it will tell you what you need to do right how much you will get stuff for it and it will give you a little bit of a detailed explanation down here how you can do stuff now for example one of the more complex uh things to uh where, where people get lost is like you go to mechanic and then you have gunsmith's tasks i wouldn't worry about gunsmith tasks early um the later you are in the game the easier they are to do uh and very cheaper but for example why this is so good is the these sites will in like 90 to 95 percent cases tell you accurately exactly what which modifications you need to buy for a particular weapon to assemble it together and then give it to this particular trader very very useful site uh i'm still using this to this day and i don't think 99.9 percent .9 of people not to say a hundred percent of people would be able to even play this game without this um this is something a little bit more advanced tarkov ballistics I wouldn't break my head with this if I were you, at least for a little while. Leave this for later, but I'm going to leave the link also in the, uh, in the comments below. Uh, it's very useful. You can, for example, go to ammo um, and then find all the ammo that's available in the game. Um, you can go to armor, uh, ammo charts, uh, sorry, armor charts, penetration chance, and you can find like, oh, if I'm wearing a particular armor, and there are six classes of different armors, uh, and plenty of armors within the each class, if I'm wearing, for example, this particular armor, and a guy's shooting me with this particular bullet, what are the chances he's going to pen? And you can see sometimes it's going to be zero, sometimes it's going to be fairly low, sometimes it's going to be fairly high. And then the damage and all that stuff. If you want to know more about the actual ammunition and interaction between ammo, armor, and, and human body, uh, the guy called No Food After Midnight made a great ammo chart where he kind of explains to you which bullets do how much damage, how much they pen, um, how much will they do to the uh, damage to armor, what is their fragmentation chances, and how will they interact with armor. Now, for example, if you take a look at, I don't know, let's go to the most popular 5.56. 45 if we take a look at the best ammunition that it has to offer the ssa ap um it has 36 damage right 36 damage 56 pen damage to armor chance of fragmentation against a level one armor it will murder it level two murder it level three murder it four five it's only the level six that will offer a little bit of a protection uh, but if you take a look at, for example, uh, one of the worst ammunition in the game for this caliber, it does a lot more damage, uh, but it doesn't pen anything. And 
it has a very fair good chance of fragmentation it won't even pen level one armor properly it has a chance to but it probably won't and it won't have any chance of penetrating anything else you could put a ton of these bullets into someone and achieve absolutely nothing something you will learn in this game it is very important which ammunition you're using and very often more important than the actual weapon weapon will be how easy it is to control um but bullets is going to be the thing that interacts with the enemy and it actually kills them so these are kind of the links that you need to get familiar with uh, if you want to have a chance at playing this game somewhat successfully and i really really suggest you use them as often as you can because without them you're just going to be lost and one more very important thing don't get scared about this i know it's a little bit overwhelming i know it's a lot of it but you don't need to break your head about the armor penetrations and ballistics and stuff like that just focus on one map which in this case i would suggest customs you can meet players that are playing their first game ever or players that have been playing this game for years it's i think the most diverse map just take it one step at a time learn the map learn the ins and outs and take it slow Я тебя сейчас, блядь, петуха дам! Now, once you actually want to start playing the game, here comes a very frequent question uh, that I think I should definitely answer for you. And that's, what should I play? A scav or a PMC? And what is even a scav and what is a PMC? Scav is basically um a safety net in tarkov it's a character you will control in the game itself on the map but you will have absolutely no control what you will spawn with so the loadout that this guy has right now level one helmet level four uh, armor a saiga shotgun and i don't know uh, it looks like he has uh, some sort of a rig and i don't know if he's got a backpack i don't know what he has in his rig and his backpack it's all going to be found in raid and it's all going to be random every time this guy is going to look different call himself different and have a different armament and gear and loot on him uh, but whatever you spawn in with whatever you loot and then if you success uh, successfully extract with it you will get to keep and it's free however once you play it there will there will be a timer at the end uh, which will tell you you're not allowed to play scav for another 32 minutes so the game will tell you then i mean you can still continue playing the game but you won't be able to play as a scav so what you do is you spend some time in your inventory uh doing stuff or you go and play your main character which is your pmc the major difference between these two is your pmc character is the character that you will be probably uh, like mostly leveling up doing quests for and and stuff and what like he will spawn in the raid whatever you give him unlike this guy this guy is always going to be random but he's going to be free this guy will spawn with exactly what you wanted you could spawn in with the best stuff in the game or you could spawn in with nothing it's entirely up to you now what will your guy spawn in with that's when we come to the to this menu uh this is what's on your guy this is what he's having in his rig and his backpack and the safety safety container and this is your stash as you can see it's a bunch of food water medicine and gear and none of it is particularly good at the beginning which is obvious and this is essentially the amount of space you will have that's free one of the major reasons why people buy biggest version of the game which is the most expensive is because this stash gets a couple of times bigger immediately and the safe container which only has two by two actually gets bigger as well and you get three by three the safety container is something that you can put stuff inside that you definitely don't want uh for it to i don't know be lost after you die and whatever it's in here if you die or not it's coming out with you everything else will be lost now should you start playing the game immediately when you're in the inventory in my opinion no there's one thing that you can do to level up without even going into the raid if you go to your overall stats you will see this is where you can take a look at them and you have zero experience 
if you go to your traders and click on any one of them for example therapist you will see these grayed out parts if you middle mouse button sure click didn't. if you research all of these for all the different traders you have you will go you will put your character to level um two maybe even three without even playing the first game and that alone could allow you to for example go here to tasks and accept some tasks that these characters these traders will give you uh now prepper obviously gives you one of the missions immediately but there are a couple of guys that will give you missions on level 2 level 3 level 5 10 12 15 and 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 so on so my my advice when you load into the game first thing you do is you go to all the traders and make sure you middle mouse button click all of these as fast as you can obviously there's a bunch of these items because if you don't not only that you're denying yourself a level or two but when you find these items in the raid they will be grayed out you will have to examine them first and then pick them up and if you have them already examined your character will recognize what it is and he will be allowed to pick it up immediately you okay? two 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 both One down dead the other guy's next to the train still alive I want to answer a couple of very frequently asked questions as well. Um, so I prepared a little bit of a list. Let's go through them. This, these questions should be most of yours and answered. How to start playing EFT? I think we answered that question already. When should I start playing EFT? This is a question that I get asked very often. When within the wipe should I actually start playing the Tarkov? And the answer is whenever the hell you want. What is the wipe? Every around six months, they kind of wipe all the progress for all the players and you start over again. Everybody does. Now you may be thinking from the out, out of the world of Tarkov perspective that this is a bad thing. This is one of the most exciting things that actually happens in the game. A lot of people that don't play the game think that this is actually bad that wiping your progress is a horrible idea until you start playing the Tarkov and you realize that every time that everybody gets reset, all the people that are so much better than you and have so much more time to play than you and have so, so much more stuff than you don't have anything, just like you now. And everybody starts from scratch. It is by far the most exciting time in Tarkov, the first month or two after every wipe. So the answer is you can start whenever you want. You can start at the beginning of the wipe when everybody else is, but bear in mind, it's going to be by far the most crowded and populated and by far the most amount of good and probably bad players will be playing. You can start in the middle when people are already done with their quests. So you are not all trying to go to the same spot and do the same thing, which could be a problem for you that, are, that is new. Or you can start at the end where nobody even cares anymore about quests and everybody's just running around and shooting each other. And you're using that time, whichever the time it is that you decided to start playing the game in, you're using that time to actually learn the game. So when the wipe happens, you're going to be better at it. Should I do it if I only have a small amount of time? I mean, that's really up to you. Do you want to play a game that could take all of your time? Um, or a little bit of time? Some people play this game... Uh, a little bit and they still have fun and they still enjoy it uh, some people play it all the time like 15 hours every day uh, you can never put too much time into it there's always more stuff to learn so it's really up to you i mean if 40 euros or so is okay for you to uh, um, separate for a game that you're gonna play an hour a week then i mean do it why not there, there's no reason not to um, but it's definitely a lot more hardcore than some of the other first-person shooters. So if you don't have, like, any amount of time to play this game, then you will probably be better off playing other first-person shooters that are going to be far less punishing um, than, than Escape from Tarkov. Because let's face it, this game is probably, and in my opinion, the most brutal and, and least forgiving first-person shooter in the world. Uh, but it has so many aspects of it that even people who are new and bad at it enjoy the crap out of it. 
which version of the game should I buy? Already answered that question. Start with the smallest, and if you do like the game, upgrade. You only pay for the difference, and you don't have to waste... You, 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 you would have not wasted a lot of money if you end up not liking the game. Which map should I start with? Already answered that question. Just follow the quests from the traders. And the first couple of them will be on customs. It is the map that has the, the widest variety of experienced and not so experienced players. Uh, what should you focus on? In my opinion, focus on learning... Uh, the map that you're playing, where you spawned, where you need to go, where is your extraction, and, and getting some loot, uh, figuring out the mechanics in the game, movement, shooting, uh, keep an eye on your hydration and your energy, uh, th those can get you killed, um, and, and just have fun and learn the game, learn, learn the stuff, and obviously, play scavs, as much as you can because you got nothing to lose by playing them you only stand to gain and it's far better feeling to just die and know that you didn't really lose anything than go in as your main character die and feel like oh man that m4 is completely gone now how to make money this is something that i tell people all the time and the best money maker in the game as ridiculous as this is going to sound, is survival. You will almost always make money as long as you survive. Now, that will very often create a type of a, a, a play style that people will, t will evolve into. And in Tarkov, we call them rats. You have chads, which are players that are just going around and killing everybody because they're good at it. And you have rats, which are not running around and killing everybody, but they're going very cautious, very slow, and, and listening and observing and just sniffing out loot, taking the loot and getting the hell out, and they don't give a crap about the PvP. Um, I would say there's a little bit more to Tarkov than just the two extremes, um, but pretty much everybody that started playing the tar uh, this game, Tarkov, was essentially a rat. Everybody was scared shitless. Everybody was slow crouch walking. Everybody was scared of the PvP because you didn't know the weapons. Wait till you fire your first time in this game. You'll be shocked at the recoil and everything. Um, so just take it slow. And uh, courage. You'll need it. I already explained the difference between scavs and PMCs. Um, should you focus on a scav or a PMC? I would say focus on a scav as much as you can, but do not neglect your PMC because that's your main progression. That's how you level up your traders, by buying and selling from them, by doing missions for them. If you just spend all your time playing scavs, you will find your inventory completely filled with stuff you don't know what to do with. And your character isn't making really a progress. Dying is a big part of Tarkov. This is something you have to have in, in, this is something you have to integrate into your bones. When you start playing this game, you will die a lot and you have to be okay with it. You have to have a mindset, I'm going to die. It's going to be a scab, it's going to be another player, it's going to be a friendly. I'm simply going to die and I'm going to die a lot, but I'm going to learn, hopefully, every time I die, I'm going to learn something from it. How many factions are even there in Tarkov at the moment? We have scavs, which can be AI or player scavs. Uh, we have PMCs, which are Yusek and Bear. Uh, one are Russian, one are US. We have rogues, which are only currently on one map, which is Lighthouse. And they are kind of ex-PMCs, but they're AI controlled. Uh, most brutal AI in the game. Um, you have uh, scav bosses, one of the most brutal guys, and they usually have their guards, which are more, more brutal than scavs. Uh, you have like three or four types of scavs, like the very basic one, the, the more advanced ones, and uh, really strong ones. Then you have sniper scavs, and then obviously um, scav players, scav bosses, scav guards. Um, we already said rogues, and then there's raiders. Raiders are also kind of ex-PMCs, but they are AI, 
and they are very they're relatively well equipped and very very dangerous and they don't spawn on all the maps um but a lot of players that are good at the game love to go and kill them because they give you a lot of xp they give you a lot of stuff and they like to farm them contact <laughs> Now we come to one of the very important questions when you actually want to load into your first raid. What do I bring into a raid with me? Like, what do I actually play with? Here we go. What you should bring in a raid with you, and it's one of my basic advices, is headset. If you can afford it, any type of headset, it will amplify the sound that you need to hear, and most of them will deafen the sound that you don't need to hear. So... A player with a headset against a player without a headset with the same level of skills huge difference helmet if you can afford to a mask any type of mask but i would recommend at the beginning just a balaclava or something that's gonna lower your like your, your skin tone essentially because it kind of stands out armor if you can afford it obviously the higher the level the better one weapon no more just one rig uh, a rig that's going to accommodate your mags grenades meds whatever you intend to bring inside uh, your pockets are always there with you i keep my meds most people keep grenades and a backpack where you're going to put most of your loot or carry whatever you need in your safe container i would say bring stuff that is like more valuable to you and hard to get than anything else very often people find very valuable items and then they dump stuff that they don't want and then they put stuff inside now mags you can't put but you can put spare ammo so if you're interested in carrying more ammunition than you're willing to lose you can put it in your safe container new players very often make a mistake and they bring like two weapons and an epist and a pistol because you can carry two main weapons on your character. And then obviously you can put them in your inventory. If you want to know how to rotate, just press and hold, click R. Simple. Um, we've seen a lot of people, like you kill them, you take a look at them. Their dog tech says level one. They have uh, two main weapons and a, uh, and a sidearm. Um, <laughs> their rig is like seven or eight magazines. And their backpack is full of um, stuff to eat, drink, and heal with. It's like they're going on a picnic. So this guy, without even entering the game, is already a loot piñata. Like, even if he finds something, he can't really pick it up because he's already full. He has to start dumping stuff or using it in order to be able to pick stuff up. Take only the basic things you will need. When you start playing the game, you probably won't need more than a weapon and one or two magazines and i would not suggest going full auto i would suggest going semi-auto because you won't know how to control the recoil and you probably if you enter an engagement you won't live long enough to reload multiple times you'll probably die um many times so you won't need a lot of weapons and a lot of ammo just bring the basic stuff and uh and good luck when it comes to meds, bandages stop light bleed. S-March or tourniquet or hemostat, they stop heavy bleed. Splints, obviously, fix your fractures. And what we call cheese um, heals you. Uh, car, obviously, also heals you. Now, there's IFAX, AFAX, Salevas and stuff like that. Uh, they all heal and have a bit of effect. You can always double click. And it will slowly, uh, it will tell you like what it is and how long it takes and stuff like that. And if you find a CMS or a Serve 12, but probably CMS, I would I would uh, suggest bringing that in your pouch. Because if one of your limbs actually goes dark, you can fix it with that. Oh, nice try. Hideout. Hideout in the bottom left is essentially where you will go to build your hideout it's like a place that you are when you're not in a raid it's literally the only place where you can relax and nothing can harm you you'll be greeted with a little bit of a text 
and um, you will be spending a decent amount of money and resources decent to make this thing grow and be very effective as you can see at the beginning it doesn't really have anything it's just a dump with a bunch of pile of trash and there's nothing really to do but as you put money into it like for example 25,000 rubles construct instantly done uh, as you put time into it it will slowly start to grow and eventually it will look like a fully grown hideout you will have a shooting range you will have a bitcoin farm um, you will be healing a lot faster um, you will be uh, recuperating your hydration and energy a lot faster um, hideout is a very important part and the faster you can get it built up the more benefit you will have out of it but it's a very long and expensive process to get it to be fully upgraded um finally a couple of questions that are not that important but people often ask is like which weapons are good which ammo is good which type of weapons i should focus on honestly it comes down to how well you master your weapon any weapon can be good and any weapon can be bad when it comes to ammunition you go to ammo charts for that you will know there um and which type of ammo should you uh which type of weapon should you focus on is it like assault rifles smg sniper rifles bolt actions semi-auto full auto pistols i would say try everything don't be afraid to use the weapon now i know what i just said is in vain and you're going to be absolutely afraid to use anything that's nothing unusual um when the game starts you're like oh my god i got two m4s this is amazing i'm not gonna use them I'm going to go use this shitty pistol or this MP5 because I'm going to care less if I lose it. And we call that gear fear. And almost everybody has it. Everybody. If they say they don't have gear fear, they're lying to you, especially if they're new. Even older and experienced players can sometimes have gear fear. It takes a lot of games to actually get rid of this feeling. It's a horrible feeling and the only way to fight it is to just play the game and force yourself to use not only the worst stuff you have and hope you come out with better but to go in with good stuff and just have a mindset i'm gonna die but i want to i want to see if i can use it because how am i gonna learn without using it guys with that said i wish you the best of luck uh, there will be plenty of more of these kind of videos coming up. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. Did you find it useful? Did I miss something? Uh, would you have me include some? Ask your questions. Uh, I'm sure other people and myself will try to get some answers. Uh, join Discord. We have a channel just for this where we like to interact with each other and help each other. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, obviously, like and subscribe and share on youtube and drop on twitch i stream just about every day a lot of it is tarkov and uh, i would really appreciate any support you guys can give i hope you enjoyed and uh good luck in whatever you're doing and don't forget have some fun